Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt and thank you for joining me today. We are talking about some 4x4 high speed wheeled action today with the Hawkeye from the Australian Defence Force. What an incredible little vehicle and I know this isn't super sexy with tracks and guns and explosives all over this thing, but in all honesty, I'm really excited for this vehicle for two reasons. First of all, I truly do feel like the Australian Defence Force deserves a really good high-speed uh, 4x4 vehicle, giving it that Land 121 Phase 4 initiative, um, a really solid contender and a vehicle that is being used today by the Australian military. I think it's an incredible piece of kit. And ironically, there may be, I'm not sure if this is going to be the case, a contender for us here in Canada. Yes, to have this vehicle in the Canadian fleet, I have to admit, would be an incredible asset for us. Um, whether or not it applies to the cold weather environments is something completely different. Uh, this vehicle is designed technically for the Australian Defence Force. They don't have minus 40 weather very often there in Australia, but I am fascinated by this vehicle because I think it has so much capacity uh, for what we are lacking potentially in the Canadian Armed Forces and what the Australian military has needed for some time. Now, the Australian military have had the Land Rover for quite a while. I have a huge respect for the Land Rover being part of the British Army in its time. Uh, I loved using the Wolf and I actually owned my own Land Rover 90 Wolf. Uh, unfortunately, I had to sell it for financial reasons, but I do miss, God bless her that vehicle but of course it's just an old decrepit 90s vehicle and they needed something that is more modernized uh, for their fleet to get troops on and off the battlefield quickly and to link to a multitude of other military requirements that uh, the Australian Defence Force have needed and this vehicle certainly does provide it now I'm not just saying that on a whim I've been doing quite a lot of research into this vehicle being that it could be potentially used for Canada but before I get into the more intricate details of this vehicle, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a showdown from those who have actually produced the vehicle in its entirety to kind of get some marketing feel from what you think of the vehicle. And then I'll get into a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at the review of the vehicle from the manufacturer. Good morning. Look, Hawkeye is a seven ton, four by four protected vehicle. Hawkeye is designed to provide high levels of protection, mobility and battlefield utility to armies and special forces around the world. Hawkeye has been designed to be very light, to fit under a helicopter for military operations, but at the same time provide levels of mine blast protection and ballistic protection similar and comparable to a larger vehicle like the Bushmaster. In Australia, we've developed Hawkeye for the Australian program. We've won the contract last year and we'll be commencing production next year for 1,100 vehicles, and we'll deliver those to the Australian Army over the following years. But we are also active in the export market to promote Hawkeye throughout the world, in Europe and the Middle East, and offer the Hawkeye because we think it has a combination of protection, mobility, uh, payload, C4I capabilities that armies need now and into the future to serve operational purposes whether it be for reconnaissance, command and control, liaison, or uh, just troop, troop protected patrol, we think Hawkeye has a really good balance of capabilities to meet those needs. It is a four by four drive vehicle with the engine and transmission uniquely designed side by side. What this means is that with the compartmentalization of the power pack, we have more internal volume inside the vehicle. This gives more space for the users to use more radios, more equipment, and more space to comfortably fit in soldiers that are wearing body armor, and weapons, communications. So the Hawkeye is offering, because of these design features, more space and more protection. It's got electrical power developed by an inline starter generator that provides arguably three times as much electrical power as some of the latest generation fighting vehicles. And we manage this power with TALUS protected, uh, sorry, TALUS power management systems that are digitized and we operate what we call a vehicle electronic architecture that is based on a generic vehicle architecture standard that enables a standardization of integration and, and interfaces for the myriad of subsystems that you can have in a vehicle like this, such as radios, computers, battlefield management systems, weapons, and jammers. 
So that was a nice little summary of this vehicle, but let's get a little bit more into the details. So the vehicle was really meticulously crafted to the needs of the Australian Defence Force around the Department of Defence's Land 121 Phase 4 initiative, aimed at replacing those beautiful yet aging Land Rovers. The name is itself inspired by the elusive Ancrothopis Hawkeye, a native death adder species of Australia. The vehicle can comfortably accommodate about six soldiers and is engineered to withstand explosive blasts and ballistic threats, which I'm not sure of the Stanek level, but I will potentially try and find that out and put it in this comment section later on. This innovative vehicle represents the future of lightweight mobility and it made its official debut on September 29th, 2009. It can be transported via the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft or other standard cargo planes and is a very fast vehicle capable of reaching speeds of up to 100 km an hour, covering distances exceeding 1,000 km. There's been rigorous testing against improvised explosive device and this has been validated in its design for maximum protection of the troops inside of it. These tests provide critical data to ensure the blast management system is integrated into the vehicle to protect the troops. The first series of mine blast tests on the Hawkeye's passenger compartment were successfully completed in November 2009, which is a very quick transition in its design phase. Orders of the Hawkeye were projected to not exceed 1,300 vehicles as per the ADF's forecast report. The first prototype was unveiled in November 2010 following extensive blast testing. They then developed two prototypes, and in February 2011, one for verification and validation. Subsequently, in December 2011, Hawkeye was chosen as the preferred vehicle for the Land 121 Phase 4 program. By June 2013, they had delivered six Hawkeye vehicles and prototype trailer to the Australian Army for rigorous testing conducted by the Defence Material Organisation Land Engineering Agency. It's quite the tongue twister. A significant contract amounting to 1.3 billion Australian dollars, which in US dollars is about 980 million roughly, was inked into the Tala's Australia Australian Defence Program in 2015, and aiming to procure around 1,100 of these vehicles and over a thousand trailers to be accompanying them by the end of 2021. They were designed really with versatility in mind. The Hawkeye incorporates a General Vehicle Architecture or GVA, which is an open design approach derived from the UK Ministry of Defence, catering to a modern defence vehicle electronic and power architecture. Its applications span various missions including air defence, reconnaissance, command, patrolling, logistics supply and liaison. With the seating capacity for the driver and the four or five additional personnel, depending on the version, this light protected vehicle could also tow a specifically designed trailer, which for the Australian military is actually going into an air defence role. The armour development from Plasan of Israel offers protection against small arms fire, artillery shell splinters, landmines and IEDs all housed within the V-shaped hull. Of course, the specifications of that V-shaped hull in the armour is classified. The Hawkeye can be equipped with an add-on armor kit for enhanced defense, deployable infield conditions within 30 minutes without requiring specialized tools. This vehicle serves as a complementary addition to the mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, the bigger boys that they have in the Australian forces if they need to. The Hawkeye can be outfitted with a remotely controlled weapon station armed with a machine gun or automatic grenade launcher. Initially, the vehicle was powered by a Steyr 3.2 litre turbocharged diesel engine generating about 300 horsepower and mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission. The full-rate production vehicles appear to utilise the Steyr M16 diesel engine producing 268 horsepower coupled with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Various configurations of the Hawkeye are proposed, including general purpose carriers, command vehicles, communication vehicles, scout cars, cargo carriers and each tailored to the specific crew sizes and operational needs. Of course, the V-shaped hull was really its prioritization for ballistic and blast protection, anticipating future system requirements. It can be equipped with that really incredible remote-controlled weapon system, and the vehicle can also provide a lot of different weapon systems to go on top of it, including a standard 12.7mm machine gun, 40mm automatic grenade launcher, anti-attack missiles, observation pods, and of course the radar systems that are actually linking to that air defense system. The heart of the Hawkeye lies in that engine, sourced from Austria, uh, with the twin turbo engine paired with the 8-speed transmission, which is, as mentioned earlier, can be side-by-side -side removed as a power pack, gives it a very high potential for being a reconnaissance vehicle or in and out of spotty locations that you need to get troops in and out of fairly quickly, but with that low profile as well, and being very, very good at going off-road with that four-wheel drive and independent coil-type suspension, along with a central tire inflation system, making it very adaptable to various road conditions, whether it be muddy, dry, wet, uh, but I'm curious to see how it would handle in the snow, and I'm not sure how much testing has been done with this vehicle in the snow, but I'm really, really excited that it could be a vehicle for us here in Canada. 
So there's the capabilities of this platform. I would say very, very good. Um, I would love to be able to drive around it and thrash it around all over the place to see what it can actually do, but the reality is I'm not going to be able to do so. But what is more interesting is how much Ukraine wants to thrash this vehicle around. They have been begging Australia to share this platform with them. Um, interestingly, you know, politics I'm not allowed to get involved with, uh, but it looks as if, though, Australia may be sort of siding towards that way, I'm not sure. Being that it is such a brand new platform, and there's a lot of money involved, I'm sure at some point we're going to see these platforms starting to be shared across two different, uh, you know, militaries around the world. But a lot of vehicles there for the Australian Defence Force, 1,200 vehicles is a huge fleet uh, replacing those Land Rovers, and let's be honest, Land Rovers have had their time. But I hope you learned a little bit about this platform today and this gorgeous little vehicle. Um, I think it's great. I'm hoping we'll see it here in Canada one day, but who knows. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you want to, uh, you know, leave me a like and click that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. And of course, click my uh, description box below to see all the links, including my Patreon, PayPal, and thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on there. Hope you have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.